that's good that's like three people recording and me on the cloud erin can definitely come in okay hello everyone welcome to the kraken in-depth zoom the plan is to go through everything I've got, we're going to have people coming in as we go, so try not to be distracted by that. Uh, the intention of this video is to record, to make clips out of, and to publish as an entire video. I'm very happy to have my guests joining me who are all here. I don't know if I have, so I'm going to, so, so I'm Mark, hopefully everyone knows who I am, Mark, the uh, original creator of Kraken and a dialogue editor, um, and you will hear from me far more than everyone else. So I'll start by just asking people here to introduce themselves. Let's say Brian, Brian, go on to say hello and say who you are. Hello, I'm, uh, I'm Brian, Brian Armstrong, supervising sound editor, uh, and dialogue editor. Um, and thanks for having me. Go on. You gotta, you gotta do some name drops, name drops, <laughs> and, name drops and shows. <laughs> uh supervise uh quite a bit of the walking dead universe shows um and we just finished uh shogun which we're all very very excited about uh, cool and someone wants to come in <laughs> this is big that's john hey <laughs> what if he should come in properly then um <laughs> cool. for now for now okay we'll, we'll move on. yeah yeah uh great okay go on go on ryan um, I'm Ryan Cole. I'm a dialogue DDR editor, supervisor. Uh, I'm worked on um, Stranger Things, Adam Project, Free Guy. Uh, I'm trying to think of what else. I'm sure there's other things on there as well. Halloween, yeah. Invisible Man. You know, Stranger Things is enough is enough for me. <laughs> uh, and uh, Polly McKinnon, go on, please. Oh, hi everybody. I'm Polly. Um, I am a dialogue and ADR editor mostly. Um, used to be much more of a dialogue and ADR supervisor before I stepped back from that somewhat with um, child rearing responsibilities. I'm a working mother and sound post, lucky me. Um, I have most recently uh, cut the dialogue on uh, Indiana Jones, the most recent iteration of that never ending franchise. I think it has ended. Um, nice to see you all brilliant and obviously every obviously they all use kraken different amounts at least they say they say they have and uh i know i've spoken to ryan a lot i know ryan used kraken extensively on stranger things which is you know i'm always excited to talk to him about that um assembly and alts and all sorts so hopefully scattered amongst this talk he can you know talk to us about that if we can't show stuff unfortunately but you know we can talk about it uh cool so gonna go from scratch this is for people who don't know it at all and go through everything which will take as long as it takes people are welcome to drop in and out the people that started recording maybe will now have to stay the whole time but um people can drop in and out they can type chats people are gonna the co-hosts or anyone can get my attention for a chat for a question or they can interrupt with something it can be informal there's no problem and uh but let's and i don't have a uh, proper itinerary just gonna go through everything i see and talk about everything so and all the bits and pieces eventually will form various videos so this is kraken 3.2.1 as it stands in its blank form i'm initially going to show show it as just a plain audio viewer so this is Kraken as an as an audio library tool. If I can get Finder to, to cooperate, make sure I am screen sharing. If people should shout me from doing anything stupid, we're recording and we're screen sharing. So I've got this project, anonymous project, and I'm just going to drop rushes in. So when you drop rushes in, it tells you it looks at your the entire tree within that folder, and it will just figure out any subfolders that have audio in. So it ignores all the, all the uh, intermediate, annoying little subfold, subfolders and empty things, and it ignores trash folders. So it, it's programmed to try to find only valid sound rolls, and it lists them here and tells you how many files it's found. So that's the point of this. Um, and 
you can just name that newly imported group. We have this idea of groups of audio, which is not very fleshed out, but eventually we, we will have different, you can allocate different things as guide tracks or ADR or production sound. And there's the intention is, is that Kraken will use those different allocations to do clever stuff, like uh, which we can talk about uh, further down the line. So I'm going to make just a basic group called rushes. You don't need to start do start bulk waveform scan. I will show you, but Kraken will create waveform images like we're familiar with in Pro Tools uh, waveform overviews. It will create them just on demand as you click. I'm going to hide the transcription because that's giving away a little thing. Uh, when you click, it will build it if it hasn't already built it. And then each time you click, it creates it and then st stores it permanently if you, unless you were to delete it manually. So on demand initial creation of waveforms. And then once they're all made, they're all there forever. So, so, you know, but if you did for some reason want to scan them all in advance, you could tick that button that we saw that said start bulk waveform scan. So this is hopefully self-evident, just a file viewer. I've only got my speaker just playing, you know, just leaking through the mic. So the audio isn't sort of super good. It doesn't really matter the actual contents, but hopefully you can hear that there's some audio playing. Um, I think my noise reduction is on low, but, uh, so hopefully there's some enough leakage into the mic just so you can hear that I'm playing something. Um, so yeah, we have a waveform view with soloing. You can solo by clicking on here or by typing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, zero. Uh, and uh, we have shows the path at the top. You can exclude certain things if you want more screen space. So hide mono mix and then you can bring it back. And that's available in um, track filter. You can do a more thorough hiding of different things if you want to always hide mono mix. So now mono mix is always hidden and to bring it back. So this this hide menu, hide and show is just a shortcut to the track filter. Uh, and if you want to bring them back and not hide them anymore, just do that. And now they're back. That's nice. Who's in the waiting room? People are constantly hidden in the waiting room. I hope that they're cool people um yeah so uh soloing and playing no hold radio. as you would expect there's a small volume control here which is just a basic a kind of attenuator really uh, and there is this speed changer which is just a toy for fun i'm happy to hear that just for laughs just because we can it's, it's almost no use at all um, and after and the settings so each panel people that don't know each panel has it's this modular arrangement, so you can adjust each panel has like a common common settings where it has this first button that allows you to reorganize. Reorganize the panels and remove them and maximize them and also detach them, you can detach it to a separate window, which is something added for Kraken three, uh, which is pretty powerful now, so how do I so I'm going to reattach uh, and you can do always on top. I'm going to reattach it and now you're going back there this is pretty slick so you can have you really can have multiple window kraken now which uh for things we'll see later can be pretty useful so the settings i'm going to do what i normally wouldn't do which is actually talk about the settings quite specifically uh so that this is act, acts as a log um a lot of these play on click ev self-evident descriptions looping loops the playback Based on the selection, that didn't turn on. You don't know how it works. You don't know. Obvious follow playhead is uh, just a funny toy, which is not, I don't know, some people might find it useful. Page, basically page scrolling, and then you can go to screen scrolling. Well, but these things are just I'm not, I don't think they're needed during editing, they're needed more in Pro Tools. So, um, uh, Turn on stop again. Autoplay is is a is an interesting one. It has different different uh, contexts based in different situations. Um, turn on stop again. Self self explanatory. Live solo is useful. Solo is when you click. If you like this sort of ninja speed, you can use play on click and live solo, just to uh to to solo and immediately play when you click. If I can get that button. Great feature. The live so I'm just, solo. I'm just doing I'm just doing one click to uh, play and solo. If you like that. Um, full height solo. Full height. I think this is available in Sound Miner. Full height solo. Again, self explanatory. Maintain solo. Interesting thing. If you're soloing boom and you move between different tracks, it will attempt to keep the solo. 
So if you know you're you're monitoring Juliet, we just move and it will st keep Juliet soloed. And then you can, I think that if you just unsolo, then it it removes the 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 you know that saved soloing. So pretty nice. You just if you're if you solo someone and that setting is on, it will hook the solo, but then just unsolo to unhook it. It's pretty slick. So that's pretty useful. Solo follow sync track is to do with syncing, which we'll look at later. Maintain zoom, also something for later. Switch to dawn spot, stack spotting, 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 spotting. All these things are more advanced. Um, so, uh, yeah, we have rushes. We have listed them. I'll talk about the blue panel, and then we'll talk about spotting, I think, because we're going to do the basic controls. So, yeah, again, just metadata list each. Everyone will be familiar with such things from SoundMiner and other tools you can sort by different columns. Uh, we have the settings in this one are just the column visibility. So you can show whatever you want to show uh, as you need it. Um, and it has this search panel, which can be popped out, uh, which again, let's search for 16B. And I have, this is quite cool. This is a new, relatively new thing. I think it came about in Kraken 2, but HyperSearch. If you don't have HyperSearch, just, I don't know what a good name, we call it HyperSearch. If you do 16A, 16B, this shows just the results. But if you want to see in the context, turn on HyperSearch, and then you can just see the results. And um, and you can, see, so you can see the surrounding ones, which is great if you're looking for a specific file like 16T05, but you want to see the neighboring files. Use HyperSearch. Right, that's cool. Uh, you can implement a second search if you want to do some kind of complex. I never, I never use this, but if you want to search manually, I don't use this because Kraken provides automatic tracking tools that will see. That mean you don't have to manually search for stuff much. So, yeah, all good. Uh, Pro Tools. What have we got? I'm not. There's no. There's no. Here's one I made earlier. I'm just going to do. Uh, I'm just going to do it raw so that everyone can see everything. That means more risk of me messing up, but PTX spotting, uh, new folder, junk spotting. So spotting being a critical thing for uh, the old fashioned way of assembly and just general editing. There are some important things to discuss. Uh, Kraken is a linked spotting system. It doesn't copy anything. Nothing in Kraken will ever create new media. Uh, it always, Bubby, you can record. It is always uh, intended to link. It's always been my approach is never render anything in, in this until you choose to. So wherever possible, basically everywhere, it will assume that you're not copying. If you do copy on import, I mean, you could have been copy on import mode. It would just it will confuse things a bit based on how Kraken is designed. Kraken assumes that you're not copying. So you need permission, you need um, automation permission, Apple event permission to spot. That normally comes up once when you first request it. Uh, so S, and now we've spotted. So that's a linked spot. There's no copying. There is no option to copy. It is the original file that got sent to the timeline. Original file, full handles, uh, and that people always say, "Oh, can I spot the other channels?" You can't. It's, the only way you can spot other channels is if you render a new mono piece of media and then spot that. If you want to spot linked to the original file, you have to. It, the 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 Avid spotting system they provide this access, you know, to spot, which is what all of the apps, all uh, um, library tools use. Only it doesn't understand different channels in a poly file. It only just gives you the first channel on a mono. What you can do to cheat is to make a, if you make a massively wide channel and spot to it, it will send everything to that. So it sort of gets, and then it's like there, and then you could just sort of pull it out uh, somehow or another, pull it somewhere. See, exactly, it's fiddly. It's not even doing it because it's just confused. I, I, I don't do this, and I imagined I could just drag them if I copy paste them. Yeah, so you could do that if you really don't like it. But what happens is these spotted clips, they are, they have the wrong timestamp. It's because of a bug. I, I, I talked to a lot of people about this, so hopefully this video can just have it have it listed categorically that um, the things you spot 
have the wrong timestamp. They get sp the original timestamp is 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 put in superficially as the current timeline. See, I, I spotted it there, and it got given the current timeline timestamp, when the real timestamp is actually uh, 10, 13, 10, 19. So what do you have to do? See, and if I try to field record, what you have to do to change channel is field record a switch by making sure it's a field recorder track. You don't use search areas with Kraken ever because you, you bring in the media that you need um, and your criteria should always just be 99 characters in file name. Uh, first 99 characters. So now you, cut, you do this and you see this, this, look, this comes up lots in many parts of the process. This white, the white list means a, I call it an orphaned clip. It's a clip that isn't properly parented to its real field recorder parent. So you can get to the other channels here, but it's kind of like a, it's like, I don't know what the word for it is, like, like slightly, you know, it's not faulty, but it's not properly parented. It's the best way I can think to describe it. Um, so what I do, if I'm spotting an individual file and, and, I, and I want to switch channels and I see it's white, I just go to Kraken and each panel has this drag button. And if I drag from the top one, you get just that file and drop it in, bang, it's added. There you go. Now the file is parented, yellow. So what you want is this gold color, gold is good. Gold is, this file has now realized its true full file parent. Um, and so when you're assembling or just switching channels, this is what you want to see. And so often you'll have a lot of these files already from an assembly, but if you, if you don't have it, just drag it in, bang, done, it's there. So now when I switch from a, the dodgy one, I, I, I can no longer switch to those white ones and see the, the timestamp got fixed. And now you can't go back to those white ones. Those white ones have been transformed into proper ones with correct. Oh, okay. Uh, I speak of the devil. That one did. Hmm. Okay. Because you still have it below it. That's weird. Uh, no, but it should, because uh, it went to the yellow. And that was, that's unexpected. So there's the first unexpected thing. That should have just seen the correct timestamp parent. I mean, Pro Tools have been changing stuff and we've seen some weird behaviors, but that, that I didn't expect. So that's. Um, yeah. Okay. So that's something that needs. Or if you clear on you, maybe if you clear the unused, because it's over there in the bits. Yeah, I mean, but that shouldn't like unused is not giving me anything. Maybe that being there, but I don't like that. Uh, that shouldn't be a, enough of a reason. Yeah. Mm, okay. Clearing unused. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. That looks to me, I've never seen that before. That looks to me like some kind of new Pro Tools thing where they've been uh, changing how that stuff works because I've done this a billion times and that should only see the new ones. So, okay, the principle is that that shows you the new ones. That is not, that's not good. That That's not showing up the right timestamp, but uh, I'm not going to let that derail me. Strange. Maybe we'll figure that out later on. Uh, so, yeah. So, spotting and channel picking. Um yeah that's primary thing let's what should we do uh uh transcription yeah we can talk about transcription just for searching for uh for alts before we've done any kind of assembly so uh i mean ryan do you want to do you want to take over for a bit talk about can you uh uh show you want to show krakenizer or uh, um yeah i can um hold on let me let me Just open a, hold on one second save my brain from melting <laughs> okay so i just gotta share a screen right um hold on let me just do mine from scratch let me get this going um okay thanks man. One second. See, if, see if this works to bring in my i want to try and bring in bring in the, my guests in some kind of smooth way and so let's see if it's smooth <laughs> Okay, uh, let me see how I share screen, all the fun stuff. Um, share, okay. All right, I'm assuming you guys can see my screen? Uh, no. No, okay, hold on, let's see, share. How about now? Yeah. You can, you can see this, um, you can see this screen? My Pro Tools? Yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, great. So I've got a, what's that? I've got a guide track, let's open up. Oh, straight for, uh, the, straight, okay, so straight for the guide track transcription. All right, <laughs> cool. Yeah, well, that's what I, I don't have dailies, um, that's fine, unfortunately. That's fine. 
Go on. Um, and the live tra transcription is this is a really I know it's still in beta um, for the so Ryan's going straight for a, for an advanced usage of transcription, but that's cool. That's, advanced, uh, yes, yeah, straight to it. Okay, so we're going to open up Krakenizer, go to model A. Krakenizer is the um, program that scans it for transcribing. Let's go to Kraken. And I've got my audio file right here. It doesn't want, does this work? Oh yeah, it does, okay. So it just you just drag it on there. It's going to transcribe it. Um, okay. And you can see, so, so essentially you just drag any files in, any files you want, your entire- Or, fold, or a folder, just drag yeah. it into. Or everything, and now it's got hundreds of gigs, it's fine. Um, so now what I can do is I can go to Kraken and let's bring Kraken over. Um, hold on, let's go to project, open, tap. Okay, so let me clear out all these guys because I don't have that drive anymore. Um, now I'm gonna drag this audio file folder because you um, Kraken doesn't allow you to just drag an audio into the media folder. You have to drag it into a folder. Let's just call it guides. Um, all right, and there's my guide track with my transcriptions on. So I can search and here's a list of everything you can see. Um, but what I want to do is I want to bring this transcription into Pro Tools. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click export transcriptions track beta, and we're going to put it in Kraken and it's going to probably write over the one that I have in there. And now I'm going to take that group and chuck it in Pro Tools. I'm just going to drag it down for tidiness and then I'm going to ungroup that and all of a sudden it's got all my lines relatively under where they are, which is pretty awesome. Um, I see they've got slight overlaps. So that makes me think that uh, this may be like a frame rate issue because those those clips shouldn't overlap, but hey, that's fine, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just, you know, it's and then music goes on well past the thing, but this is still a beta feature, but yeah. it's a great, it is a really handy feature let alone being able to just use it as an alt finder. Um, let's see, I wanna hear the word Adam. Okay, all right, so I can jump and it's gonna jump all over. You can see it jumping up in here to the lines that I need. Let's see, let's see if anyone said awesome. Yep, awesome, it's down there. Um, so this is a great feature and this can be really good for ADR queuing depending on the program that you're using, um, easy to drag into um, ADR Q tracks, or even just copy the text and paste it in your ADR queuing software. Um, but it's also just great, like, for instance, if I wanted, if I hadn't been in this real, like, let's say the show went away for a few months and then came back and I wanted to figure out where a line is um, that I couldn't remember somewhere in this 20 minutes, I could just search for Adam and then just go and find, you know, <laughs> search, search for it this way which is super handy that happened on a show um a few months ago where i needed to find the line i'm sorry and i was like an hour-long episode and we hadn't worked on it in six months and it was really really handy to be able to do this sort of thing and if you went back to kraken the transcription on your wave view you could use the control command if you're as you say if you're, if you're zooming in and looking you can use the control command to send a search from the text. You should demonstrate that. You, you know, you know where you click on the text above the waveform with Control Command, and you and that sends it to the to the speech search. So oh, you, I did not know that. I yeah, did so, not. Great. So, so there's we're all learning together. So if you go to if you, if, if I mean, what we need is to have Kraken in syncing mode so that it goes to that clip. This is what I'm. So, what, what, I, what I said when I said about importing the different types of things. You'd import this and you'd say this is the guide track. Then when you have it syncing, it will zoom into that, and you'll say, okay, I want to search for problem with acting like and just control command click and drag across those words you no longer need to so you don't need to type stuff you can just use it as a shortcut um if wow. you click and drag but click and drag it will just pick up that phrase if you, yeah yeah that's pretty so, slick and you could do it back so so that's um i would say that's sort of so this is this is we just jumped straight into the deep end which is great uh for if anyone hasn't seen it of uh transcribing anything you know it's you can transcribe poly poly dailies rushes obviously this situation is transcribing a, mo a single mono file which is very long we've recently you know sorted it so it works with massive uh documentary files like five hours long and 10 gigabyte 
crazy files. Um, yeah, it, it only transcribes. Uh, is that, that's good, Ryan. That's amazing. Is, is, is that is there anything else specifically for that, or is that? That's, that's what I have for transcription, and then obviously you could use it down here if you were. If I had the dailies in there, I could be searching for this line. If I typed an atom, you know, it would populate a ton of different um, options. But I only right in this specific instance, I just have the guide track. Yeah, I mean, similarly, I only have a small set of of rushes, but when you have everything, it's pretty stunning. On my current job, like I'm just looking for a certain phrase and I type in the words and I just see all the alts from every angle. And just yesterday I, I found, uh, there's a whole scene we've got with, uh, you know, these, uh, big name actors. I'm like, Oh God, we have to do all this ADR. And I just found a wild track that you just wouldn't have found because I just see, cause I do a search and you just see like in the, in the path column of the purple panel, you just see like wild track WT and like, ah, they recorded a wild track. This is a problem where we, we don't know these things have happened unless they happen to have been put on the AAF already by the editor or somehow someone's told you, or of course you'd look through the, you know, conscientiously you should look through for things called WT, but Hey, you know, sometimes we just. But don't. also like um, a lot of the time I find the production mixer will put that in the notes metadata. So I'll use this notes column a yeah. ton to just search for wild tracks or or whatever other sort of like they'll put in um, room tone in the notes and that sort of thing. So you don't have to go searching through PDFs or Excel files and all that stuff because um, production mixers have started using this column a lot. Gint savings, definitely. Uh, okay, so this is a good, should go back to me and I'll do uh, syncing. Um, actually to do sync, I need to do it. I need to do sync to an assembly really. So that's, so I should do an assembly first. I wanna show uh, door sync syncing up Kraken for editing. But to do that, we need an assembly. Uh, does the transcribe feature come with a Kraken for advanced? Krakenizer, that's a, um, Anya, Krakenizer only is licensable with a Kraken 3 advanced license. But you can use all of the transcription that Ryan just showed will work in any version. You just can't do the transcription. So, I mean, that, I'm just, I, I just sort of, you know, transcribing is a, is, a, is a big new feature. I want it to be part of the advanced, but I didn't want anyone to not be able to use them. So you either have to just get to a, to an advanced license temporarily, just once a project, I'm thinking of starting up a, a rental of an advanced license, which could be used for uh, assembling and transcribing just as a one-off uh, at the beginning of being of a project. And then you can, any, then everyone can just use it or one person on, on a larger team needs advanced and other people can use can use basic uh i'm, I'm not sharing am i so i'll go back to sharing <laughs> uh oh sorry i wasn't showing anything uh so we have to go in sort of different orders here but i think an assembly is needed to uh in order to show some other stuff unless anyone has another thing i'm missing we need we need some we need a timeline of material so what i'm going to do i'm going to do let's do the old way quickly which is still going to be available uh so finder i'm just trying to get finder to show up on this window edl drop in edits rather than media doesn't let you put it there edits go so there's a name, pick a color, which is, will be explained later. Pick an alias so you don't have to show these silly long names that EDLs have. Let's just call it audio, AUD. Frame rate's critical. So, you know, don't if you mix up frame rates, you're going to have chaos. So 23.976. Import, that now appeared here. So now we're getting to some lots of new functionality in Kraken 3 for anyone who's just a Kraken 2 person. Um, Previously, you just click on that EDL and it would just show up in the red panel. Now we have these buttons that we're calling bubble bubbles. So we have, you can't see the colors before you click, but they're red and yellow, red and gold. So the first column is red bubble, which means just show this as a, as in the old, old style EDL. I'm going to bring in a video EDL as well, just so that I can show you two of them. So make sure the frame rate is, we're going to fix that. So it defaults to the current project frame rate uh, rather than just being having to set it every time. That's a definite one in the plans. And that's, that's a, that's a vid EDL. So I'm just going to call it vid uh, import. So now you can, you know, old, old, old style Kraken 2 is you just pick the red one and that just shows different EDLs. Uh, I'm not going to show the timeline yet because I'm going to, I'm going to do an assembly as if this was Kraken 2. So, this is the EDL and it has role. Hopefully people know EDLs, role names, clip names, 
time code. Ignore this scene slate take stuff. That is not part of the EDL. That's part of something that Kraken tried to figure out by itself. So uh, that's a bit of a beta feature, which we can go into. I should go into, but uh, there's so much stuff to show. It's just So matching. The essential principle is to assemble inside Kraken, is to do matching, find matches. And Kraken will look at time code, all of your imported rushes slash dailies and all of your events, and it will try to figure out what that clip is. An assembly, an assembly inside Kraken, essentially. And so now you have a, a an EDL viewer. This was one of the first things that Kraken was like 10 years ago. You can now just play EDL clips that are now assembled internally. And uh, New stuff in Kraken 3 is the match method. You can see how it's done it, which is nice because uh, there was, you know, previously you had to s sort of do a bit of guessing. So uh, how, there's, there's lots to say about all these things. Day no TC fail uh, shows up when it found the day. So it most of these did match because their source column got a, a WAV file. Some of them found a day, a correct day, as in KF. 211 SR11, but didn't find any file, which is obviously a red flag. It's a red flag of missing files or bad timecode. So uh, that flags up as, oh, there's something wrong here. If it doesn't find a day at all, that's a different error. So that specific error is like something's up. You've probably got something wrong. Um, but again, we'll just go with what's what's uh, assembled correctly here, which is most of it. On the right of, the, again, the, this red panel has the same deal. Uh, we've got some settings here I might just quickly casually refer to. Sync to door, I've got to show later. Show source metadata if you want the source column. The source column here is currently showing the WAV file name. But if you do this, you can show you can show the slate and the take from the metadata in the matched file, which can just be really good if you're if you're looking at the clip name column and trying to check the assembly now. Like uh, if I turn it off. Okay, as it happens here, the WAV file names do have slate and take in the name, but sometimes they don't. And if they don't, you might want to be able to just look down and just, you know, if you're just checking the assembly, you can now compare the actual source metadata with the file name. So there's just different ways of viewing it. Use sample offset and viewer is not for now. All these are all syncing things. And then show match method is just to show that column. Um, uh, important thing on the right here is the number of clip selected and the number matched 820 out of 866 matched i hope that what i'm pointing at is clear on the zoom um but yeah 820 out of 866 matched i think i will talk about selection before i assemble this is again something that bugs people and is crit critical uh we have there's a hybrid selection system in kraken so when i talk about the the current active event the current like hot event, the one that's shown up. That's the red, that's this red. But you'll see that it says not selected. Uh, that is not a, a selection. You can, you can select a subset. So I'm gonna clear the matches. You can select a subset. And the way you do it is by control command clicking, a two finger modifier click. And so that, that gray now it says seven, it says seven of eight, six, six. So this gray is our you know, selection of clips. You can paint. You can unpaint. I'm probably going to forget the keyboard presses because we, we changed them recently. But to, and, and now this is just a list. You, you can't you can't unselect this list. It can't it can't be unselected just by clicking around. Like in Finder, when you click on multiple files, let me you click on you make this selection and you're like, oh, okay, okay, yeah, 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 and then you click somewhere else. Oh, I've lost it. Like that always bugged me. So uh, so this this gray selection is completely persistent until you actively use a modifier to adjust it. So you don't have to kind of get RSI, like specifically picking and then holding off. So that gray selection is now there and is stored independent of whether I happen to be browsing other things. I can still go around and browse, I can add. So we have we have painting selection. I'm definitely gonna forget the shortcuts, but we have, uh, let me see if I don't think it's gonna be three fingers. What is it? Is it command shift? I can't remember that there's one key pressed for click on the first one, click on the last one, uh, which, uh, you know, Someone else might remember, not me. So you can just click on the first one and then select a range by clicking on the last one. Um, but most importantly is magic select, which got changed. It used to be called shift, shift. I used to call it shift select. It, we now made it shift command. And if you hold down shift command, it's, it's just massively augmented now in Kraken 3. It highlights all the same. You see, so this, I'm, I'm not clicking anything, I'm just floating. So this is like the magic selection. It will just select 
the same of whatever you're floating over. So if I do there, it select all the A2s. If I go here, it selects all the, that file. If I click here, it just does 158 or all of that real or, you know, so this is incredibly useful for just picking out individual things. Um, and also it's good. It's good if you have a selection and you don't you shift what you think is shift Daniel shift beginning and the end. No, so it used to be, it used to be shift. Um, if you, have been selecting lots of different bits and pieces and you want to just be sure that you've, you're working on one specific event you can't just click on it like you have to you, what i do is i use the magic select on the id because that guarantees that the id is should be unique so that's how we to guarantee that you only have one item selected if you're doing a specific single selection so uh if i want to uh, i don't know i just want to find matches for everything that's got this name five selected matches, find matches. So you just did them. So this is whatever you're, you're assembling part of an EDL. You're just doing a, a, you've got a, you've got a change list and there's a new scene. You might just go, okay, whatever this bit. I mean, you can do find matches on the whole EDL. Of course, there's no harm, but just to, just to demonstrate the idea that you can do most, almost every command is filterable filters by the gray list. So, um, yeah, but I, I just wanted to show that. So, uh, to clear the selection, control command C. There you go. So that's good for resetting. Because that, you know, you can do, do, again, do that if you want to clear. And if you have, importantly, if you have no selection, that means it works on everything. I see some people doing select all, not necessary. If you have no selection, the, the, it, it, Kraken just assumes to work on everything because you know it's just the default mode is to work on everything. So no selection does everything. So just going to do the old-fashioned assembly. Um, just to show that assemble to door, which is Kraken 2, it has to have a, a Pro Tool session synchronized to it, which is the scan button. Yep, thank you. Don't mess me around. So it's seen that spotting PTX there. And now that it knows about the session, it's just going to sort of be happy. Total track three, total clips 866. Again, I'm not going to spend too long with this because it's the old fashioned way, but go to zero with three blank tracks and make sure you're not copying on import. As I've already said, this is just a just like the individual spot that I did of a single file. This is a queue of just a massive queue of loads of spots. So it will it, it just sends the assembly to the timeline. So you should zoom out so you can see it painting. Some people haven't seen this. It's quite amusing. Uh, there you go. So it's just sending spot commands in a queue. You mustn't click on the timeline. You should set the, the the session to zero start time, and don't then if you click, all of the spots are offset from zero. So if you if I was to click on the timeline, change the time code, it would mess up the spotting position because everything is spotted from the current cursor, which you should set to be zero, just to eliminate variables. So. I'm going to do, let's do the old fashioned spot just to show uh, syncing the door just for the sake of it, just for variety. So spotting complete. Thank you. So that did the, the old linked spot of the assembly uh, with all of the things I've discussed about the white clips, all of that stuff is all, all relevant here. So what you do the old fashioned way, each of, I said, each one of the panels has this dragging tool, dragging from the green drags the current file. Dragging from the blue drags everything currently listed. So you could like type wild track and then drag wild tracks. Like I won't do it, but I will try to WL wild line name contains WL not. And I had the and on there. So that's confusing it. W name contains WL. Oh, hyper search is on. That's why. Thank you. I knew there was something that, that, that we didn't mess that up. Wild line. There's only one. So dragging from there would initiate a drag of whatever is whatever is in that panel. But more interestingly, dragging from the red panel drags all of the matches. So it takes all essentially it drags all of the used media. So that's gonna be a lot of stuff. 248 files, drop them in. They were added, they didn't get copied, just been linked. And so now, apart from the annoying problem we saw before, suddenly, they're all now properly parented. So now you could you could do field recorder expansion to get these back, but I'm not going to now. Um, so syncing to door. This is the other huge thing. One of the many things that Kraken does is you can sync your session to Kraken by telling it what tracks you want. Do that. My preferred way is to 
in fact currently the only way in Kraken 3, is to put a slug like that at the start of all each track that you want to be a sync track. Let's just call them DX1, DX2. Let's just imagine this is an edit or an assembly or something, whatever we want to sync to. You set that. You've got to make sure that your MIDI, I got so I've so many so many people this so many times that I can do it in, with my eyes closed. Um, your MIDI has to be connected, which requires uh, synchronization, MTC button to be turned on. It requires preferences, these final two to be turned on and they're on. And it requires MTC and MMC to be sent. Uh, peripherals, machine control, enable, Kraken MIDI in. If you have video sync and video satellite, it's very annoying. Video satellite blocks MIDI output. So there isn't a currently a solution for that because MIDI gets blocked. Very annoying. I don't know of a solution that needs to be discussed in the community. So I'm now sending MIDI timecode and uh, MTC and MMC. And you can see that Kraken's timecode and Pro Tools timecode stay in sync during scrubbing and during playback. They should do anyway. If it'll start playing it. See, so Kraken is animating. So Kraken now knows where we are in the timeline and it knows what tracks we want to use and it knows the media because we've got the rushes imported. So if I now save in Pro Tools and rescan, scan to update, see the door sync got populated automatically and now it knows everything to automatically jump around when we, when we, so now this is so no more typing in. This is Kraken 2 stuff, but you know, some people might be new for some people. Uh, if you want to work on this come on audio don't mess me around yeah 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 io output LRC. i think that one is the only speaker that i've got playing out loud so hopefully this is coming through Last journal of the alchemist. so that when you scrub to it apart from some zooming issue Last journal of the alchemist. So it took you to the clip, to the neighborhood. It, it took you to the clip so you can immediately ob observe the handles. And it took you, and it takes you in the blue list to the file. If I take away, obviously take away this search. It's, it takes you to the file so you can observe. So let's try and do a quick alt this way. Uh, I recognize. I'm going to do a long. When I was staking Tan out, his offices, his warehouses, I found this exact same model. Of so some, some line I was typing in there. When I was staking Tan out, his offices, his warehouses. So it, met, it took me to twenty C take two. Okay, the twenty C take one. When I was staking Tan out, his office. There you go. Alt. So I found an alt in in three seconds without having to search for slate names and stuff. It just automatically jumped. So that's but but so that's just it's just following you around it's just you know once you once you have that going and kraken you just never do anything else it's crazy to do anything else but then you have to incorporate you have to think about you know, kraken 3 now it's got transcriptions added so now we'll circle back around to what ryan was showing with the uh speech panel show speech view and now imagine we are looking for something else uh let's say it won't be hard to build a case it won't be hard to build a case won't be hard to build a case. Why is that waveform not showing? Come on, behave. What's it doing? I think this waveform has got some some visual bugs. It should never stop bothering us. Uh, just trying to find something clear. Going to get the time code out of the way. It's annoying. I always get rid of it myself. Do you have access to this camera's archive? Yes. Access to this camera's archive? So. Have access to this camera's archive? We go here. Do you have access to this camera's archive? Yep. Do you have access to this camera's archive? I'm going to use access to this camera. And there's the alts. Done. And you have access to this camera's archive? Yep. Another alt. And you have access to this camera's archive? Another alt. And you have access to this camera. And you have access to this camera's archive? She is extremely consistent, whoever this is. It's crazy. Do you have access to this camera's archive? I'm, I, I can't believe what I'm hearing. And you have access finally a different different read and you have access to this camera's archive so there's alts it's just it's just nuts you can just find alts for anything immediately it's, there's no way of working without this once you get used to it scared of her i typed in scared of her 
if I show up with anyone else, I'm scared of her. That I, if I show up, Mia will think I'm scared of her. I think anyone else, Mia will think I'm scared of her. I hope again. I hope it's coming through the mic. Show up with anyone else, Mia will think I'm scared of her. So yeah, speech recognition alts super fast. So I've, so you've got synchronizing, and searching for alts with uh, transcription. Uh, jumping around a bit, just sort of, sort of randomly, uh, you can filter the transcription list with channels. Let's say channels contains uh, Evan. I just seen that as a name. So you can, you can't pick an individual speaker. You can't say who's speaking. We're going to, we're working on that as a future plan, but you can say at least someone called Evan was involved in a scene. So if you type, uh, I don't know, what have we got? Helicopter. And you didn't have Evan, you had Jim. You know, you should have no match then. So you'd know, uh, yeah, helicopter. Nice. So. But I mean, I show when I show this speech alt, it's like yeah, it's like it doesn't. It's, I think you just see straight away the usefulness of it. it doesn't I don't need to dwell on it. It's massively useful. Um, uh, yeah. So spotting alts, syncing. What should we do? Um, if anyone has any, I can just think about the next thing to show. The, you want to show the alternate, your new way of making an assembly with like yeah. this? Like you showed the spotting, and we can show the new way. Sure, new assembly. I was going to ask too before before you went off yeah. of this about you know like the breath stuff we were talking about. Before. Oh, go on then, go on, Brian. Do you want to just talk about it? Yeah, and I'll I'll show it uh, while you're talking about it if you like, because I think I have some of that here. Gotcha. Well, I we were just talking before about how um, valuable breaths and stuff are because that's a lot of the life of, uh, you know, dialogue sometimes. And so I end up queuing a ton of that for ADR and it's always not always, but sometimes can annoy actors to just have to breathe and react. So, um, being able to find that stuff through transcription is, uh, game changing. And you do that by typing, what do you type? <laughs> I was hoping it would be here, but you type in breath. Yeah. Is that what you do? Uh, yeah, so it, so what it does is it shows non-dialogue stuff like breaths. Now this one is not showing up breaths. It's it's very it's you know it's very context specific whether it works, but it does a lot of this non-dialogue transcription. Here it's done size. Now you won't be able to hear this very clearly on the on the mic leakage, but that is absolutely someone going. <sighs> That's someone. So yeah, it's, la it, laughs, all of that kind of stuff. I and mean, a lot of times you you build, you know, you have a show where there's a lot of main characters and a lot of people are hanging out behind and you just want to find stuff to fill. And so laughs and all of that sort of nonverbal stuff is is uh, gold. Yeah. It's hit and miss with how well it does, of course, because it's, you know, it's it's a speech engine. So you have to, you know, here it's showing up fighting as laughter, but hey, you know, it still finds useful stuff and it finds yeah, footsteps. And, I'll, and we've only got a few days of material imported here. If you had a whole show, you'd have a, a, a much wider wealth, but footsteps is a good one for uh, potentially just finding little blank bits that have, when it says footsteps, it thinks it's found some kind of dirtiness. Um, so there's all sorts of weird things it finds with these square, square bracket things. Um, blank audio music it's just it's yeah it finds lots of random stuff sexy cool. what was that sexy music <laughs> what on earth? <laughs> that ain't sexy music so it's got a life of its own <laughs> um, bell ringing <sighs> so yeah all these all, these i call these square bracket things like bonuses because they're a bit it's a bit they sometimes they're right sometimes they're not but they are very it, useful yeah it's all subjective even within itself so that yeah yeah it's, it's nice uh, to, just to be able to have that yeah yeah cool um There's a question that just popped up that i think you mentioned earlier but will it be possible to identify speakers in the future i mean we hope so we are looking at it julia was saying he was looking at it today we we, we of course understand the massive value that that would provide but there are many many uh 
issues around it. I'll quickly talk about what I hope is the obvious one, which is that our polyphonic dailies that have multiple mics, all of the mics hear everything unless you're everyone's people are very far apart. And this trans, this transcriber is transcribing all of the, the crew, all the people who are off mic. It's transcribing them. It can hear the director talking far away. So if you're keeping that in mind, it can hear everyone on every mic. So if I was to transcribe every channel, that would like you think that would lead you towards, oh, okay, you know when someone's speaking on a certain channel, but you don't because it hears everyone on every channel. So I don't do that. We just transcribe one channel, uh, which normally is the first one, but we're building in more flexibility if you need to say, oh, actually, I want to transcribe other channels. But most of the time for most of us thankfully we have a, a, the first channel is a, some kind of mix you can say second channel if you have a lav mix on the right let's say um but it's just way faster and more sensible i believe to transcribe one channel and then so in so once you've transcribed the one channel that you're talking about identifying who's talking which is just another ai challenge which is a well-trodden challenge so there are ways of doing it obviously it's a huge thing already in um, subtitles youtube captioning they do exactly that. So the technology is there. We just have to figure out how to use it. Um, so yeah, it'd be cool. But I don't like to throw things in that, that that have too many kind of false positive results. And once once we get it right, that would be amazing because that would be huge because that, that opens the door to a lot of things. Um, There's always inherent problems too. Like you know, sometimes the characters hanging out backstage or you know off camera just chatting with somebody else that has nothing to do with the scene yeah. getting all this weird false information if yeah so it's, i feel it's much better to hook onto the work and the great work of the location sound mixer who is trying to make a respectable flow of the shot and taking out people's mics who have gone to the loo exactly so it makes sense to to use the the mixer's track to, to transcribe because of it's intended for consumption in one piece uh, that's just obvious to me. It's loud. It's clear. It's meant to be clear. It's the perfect contender for transcription. Uh, localizing. I mean, localizing. Nick, you mean different languages? Uh, it's a ongoing mission, which I feel like maybe is not the best to take too long with here. Except to say that on the website uh, and on the group, we are, you know, beginning the process of finding models that work with different languages. Julio. My uh, right hand man is uh, in charge of it. People can contact him. Various people have been. We believe we've got good success with Spanish, German, Italian. These are the obviously the, the big non English languages in Europe and to some degree in the world. Uh, it gets harder and harder the more you get into the less, you know, the, the lower population languages because these things rely on corpuses of text that just aren't present with a the, the word I don't want to use the word lesser. I don't mean to be insulting. You know, I don't mean you know lesser used languages. Um, but it's a but you know it's a it's an ongoing project, and we're looking at all sorts. So talk to Julio. Uh, what I think is almost impossible, which is what Brian Brian wanted. I think was it Japanese and English, or yeah, and, yeah. Uh, like I don't know, like someone changing the, 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 their language in the middle of a sentence. Just think about what that involves for a speech recognizer. It has to be, in theory, listening in every moment for every potential language in the world. That, for me, seems almost impossible, like because because every sound could be something else in a different language. Maybe it's possible. Uh, I think it's more likely. So I was thinking, Brian, maybe we can get good Japanese and run it through, and good English, and we get just two transcriptions next to each other. That's something. That's yeah. Uh, if there was a way where you could say, you know. Japanese and English. That's all you need to look for. Yeah, know. we see. We don't know that there's a way to have a model which is a hybrid of two languages. Like, right. we're not uh, a, a, not ourselves AI AI experts. That would be amazing. But um, uh, I, so if that's possible, that's great. But that is an unknown area. What would be known is just to transcribe twice and try to get some kind of feedback from the system about that it recognised the language properly, because I think it would know that it, what it heard wasn't valid Japanese if it heard English, for example. So yeah, that's an interesting area to dig into. Uh, I can see a lot of complexity, but would be cool. Obviously, would mass massively useful. Um, okay, assembly. The new assembly, assemble to PTX. Go on, I'm going for these questions. Okay, that's a you're asking a general you're asking a general question about approach, Daniel. Which uh, so. Uh, 
I know other people chat about that. Uh, so Kraken 3, Kraken 3 advanced only, assembled directly to PTX. So let's just, I'll use the, I'll use the, uh, the old style as a comparison. Uh, we have our EDL, we did our matches. I'll get rid of this panel to get it out of the way. All you do, assemble to PTX, get this window. So hopefully self-explanatory, but down the list is a, down the left is a list of all of the names featured in all of the matched files. So these are all of the, if you imagine your, your channel, your, 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 your tracks, your channels, the words are so, so interused, your, all of your track names, uh, this is what you're going to get in your expansion. So you can, Ben, you can, um, allocate them different ways. You could divide up mixes, booms, and radios by just dropping this in, or you could get rid of that, get rid of that, get rid of that, and just have everything in one, which gives you a Titan style, everything just nice and tidy in one lump, uh, which is actually very appealing for me and other people. Um, so you can build any arrangement. You can leave out, you could just do an assembly of just booms. If you type here, anything you type here, it filters. So boom, it just found anything which contained the word boom. So that would, that would bring in boom one, capital boom, small boom, boom L, whatever, you know. Um, so, I'm going to do just to show the point. It had a preset when I loaded it, but I'll do it manually. Mix, new group, boom, new group, and then just everything else. I could do a plant group, I could do a car group, whatever. And you can ignore certain things. If I get rid of that group, let's say we we know we don't want the, the, the cars for some reason. Uh, let's see, or oh, can I unselect as I can? That was good. I wasn't sure about that. You can leave out certain channels. So these channels won't get assembled. Uh, and you pick the color that the tracks will be. So I'm going to go yellow for mix. Green is my like proper boom color and blue for love. And I'm going to say that the mix channel should be muted. And uh, that's fine. We have options of track per name, which will do like a field recorder expansion by by channel name sort of thing, which I could show. Uh, and then color per name just sets the cut. I mean, let's do that. Let's do color per name on the loves. Let's challenge it. We have color per EDL track as well. Something, something Ryan asked for, which is just, just, he just wants to have, you know, EDL channel A be one color, channel B be another color, channel C be another color, just like a, a solid wedge of color. He doesn't want any more precise control. I might do an, a, a Ryan style assembly in a bit. So export, done. Export PTX, new folder. This is going to be basic. Just to, I'm just putting it in a folder just to not get confused. Basic, done. K3 demo. Once I get past Finder, basic, basic, done. Import it, done. Link. That's it. So, done. Assembly done. Expansion done. No field recorder. Uh, and there's your yellow mix, green boom, and blue lav. Uh, and there's your color. Let's see, what did it do with color per channel? Something we added recently. So I'm, I'm challenge, challenging it here. I'm finding out myself what it's going to do. Yes. Go away. I don't care. Okay. It's, it's, it's giving me loads of, loads of uh, problems because of this channel, which I, ne I never use. I, know, I never use anything more than mono, uh, maybe occasional stereo. So all uh, mix. All on there. Mix, 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 mix. Muted. Boom, 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 boom. Green. And then color per character. So we've got all the Zillan is orange. It's just to mix a random color. In the future, we could do better. So now you've got blue, Nikki. And I mean, these are too close, obviously. We need to put some more intelligence to make it not put colors that are too close. But that gets a little tricky. Pro Tools has limited numbers of colors. And there's Altia purple. So that's cool, you know, if you, if you want that. So the, the point is, that anything goes, we can make all sorts of interesting layout options uh, to expand. Um, yeah, and leaving things out, muting things, assembling just the booms, anything goes, any ideas people have, they can, they can run it by us, we can try to implement it. For example, Ryan's, Ryan's desires, which actually I think I might start to take on board myself, 
which is no no silliness with groups. I mean, maybe you want a separate mix group, but let's say we want everything and we just want to have a different color per track. Yeah, basic. For those that know the, tight, the way Titan used to create stuff. So export PTX, Ryan. Ryan. You I'm sure I'm not the only person that likes it. No, like no, I just think of it as that. You know, I've got this is how this is. I'm not this way, is my... way to single him out there. Jeez. No, it's a, oh, it's a good thing. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> he's, he is the progenitor, the creator of this idea. Uh, So obviously that just appeared. I need to making I'm making a messy by bringing in those different assemblies. But we know that that's if I just hide these, because they are, we know that these are the new ones. So there you go. That and I'll just let me set an output. So there's just a stack with a color for the entire thing. That's how. So this is Titan. This is something you, we couldn't get in any Pro Tools field recorder expansion. Is an expansion without gaps. Some people are really bugged by by the you know by the gaps that we all are familiar so with. So clean and nice. You know, that, nice goes, and you know, that comes there. Like, uh, yeah, I know. I always thought, oh, who cares? But, you know, some bit, but I get it now. This is just so well, tight. It's not, it's not even about the giant gaps. It's sometimes they leave these spaces. There'll be like 13 empty tracks because they use 22 on one thing. So that's really what it is. Yeah, totally. And so that is, again, if you ignore the guff that I've incorporated underneath, uh, it's there. I'm being very liberal. Hide. This is what came in with the, with the new lump. I think I just chucked it in, but you can see it. You can see it there in those first two first two groups. Exactly in exactly the file stack as it is exists in the audio file and just coloured. That's it. Uh, so yeah, there's lots of different different alternatives. Yeah, man. Yeah, Adrian. Yeah, I hate the gaps, Erin. Yeah, uh, fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Yes, uh, uh, if there's anything that needs to be addressed to me. Erin, thanks a lot, Erin. Nice. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, that's that. There is there are things to talk about regarding file IDs and field recorder status. Uh, you have to know what you're doing, and see these are because I've already had these files in from before. When I, when I imported the PTX tracks, they just said, ah, okay, I am, I am part of this file family. And it, it's, it's got golden, which you know, I thought golden as the perfect standard until I saw just today that the time code actually wasn't correct. So who knows what Avid are doing to us, but, um, it came in and it got, it got added to that family of, of that file. So it's gold. So for me, this is, this looks good. This came in and it, it knows it's its parent file. It's not done like a multiple ID situation, but you have to be careful. You know, you, if you've already imported all of your dailies into Pro Tools and ID stamped them all, you might do it one way. You might just, you will assume that all your audio files already have an ID. So you might just drop them in. Other times, if you haven't, you might want to do the crack and adding the media. So this is definitely something that needs to be discussed. Uh, that's all right. Polly had to go. Thanks very much, Polly. No, no problem. Uh, she says the transcription feature is a game changer. Thanks very much, Polly. Well, thanks for coming. Uh, Mark, I feel like we ran into something weird on this show that you were helping me with where the AAF was literally named the exact as the sound rolls and it created some weird stamping issue. Like it was, it, it was getting pretty confused, but that I've almost never had that happen before. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I know that window that comes up saying this file that already exists is an absolute bane and a pain. And I know no one wants it to happen because, I mean, some people are very, very pernickety about the clean workflow. Others people will just click past it. But if you click on one of the buttons, like for me, you always get a crash in Pro Tools. Uh, so, yeah, I, I'd love to say that I knew exactly what's going on with all of those contexts. But Pro Tools is a, a black box with stuff going on inside that we can't know about we're not allowed to know about to a large degree so uh i just you have to just try things out and hopefully kraken can provide the tools and the methods to understand what's going on and and just work through the the the, the correct path the correct path with your media um it's an ongoing ongoing thing uh constant to be to be understood and tested but i've done this on my projects and i, I you know various people have been using it and it just it just works so it seems good it seems safe it is a custom made ptx which is like you know dangerous it's what eddie load does it's uh it's it's now the new normal it's a new standard for assembly 
So I'm glad Kraken does it. And uh, yeah, fix sync. Now fix sync, Titan sync, syncing up to waveform. This is something that I had a preparation for my Delane Lee presentation, but I've been too busy to uh, work on it now. So I, maybe I haven't got the perfect demo, but I can still run it. Let's just get rid of maybe everything apart from the raw. Delete. I'm being a bit messy here. Don't know what that is. So uh, what I'll do, tell you what I'll do. I'll go to the, I've got an AAF session here, which I think is something useful. Save, whatever. So if, you, if your assembly uh, is slightly out of sync, yeah, don't care. Slightly out of sync, which happens, I find, on your NTSC frame rates, 23, 976, most famously, but can happen on 25 and 24 as well. Kraken can uh, align to any guide track, to an AAF or to a dialog stem or to anything, but of course you want to give it the most pure version of your media you can. So an AAF is perfect because it has all the clips with handles. Uh, it will work with an MXF linked AAF to do fixed syncing from. Uh, and I'm gradually trying to creep MXF support into different areas. So we can read a file as a fixed sync guide directly from MXF. Uh, but that's not to say I don't say people should try to have a, an AAF, which is um, mono 24-bit 48K audio with uh, no fades, because Kraken wants a very simple timeline to look at and to use as a, a, a syncing master. So. Again, apologies, not having the best demo. If I maybe make a separate video showing my extremely contrived fixed sync situation, but just to, to feature in, in this video, just to show it so people get the point. I have a AAF now open, so I'm going to scan that to, to update the Kraken uh, PTX. Um, you can, you, we have an assembly internal to Kraken, and let's imagine that some of it is out of sync. You do Titan Sync, Titan Sync, and it shows you the guide tracks and it allows you to set the range of frames, which is like your search range. These things are, you know, uh, from Titan, people who know Titan, this is where these things were born from. You set the range, the search range, and you run it. And it, for every clip in your, in your EDL, it goes through and it looks at that position in the, ti in the current guide timeline. So in this case, AAF session PTX, and it will look for every track, which uh, has been tagged KGT for Kraken Guide Track. You can also just tick additional tracks here if you want, but if you tag them with KGT, anything that starts with KGT will appear as a guide track by default. So if you do that and you run, it will go through. Let's see. I see a lot of I see a lot of warnings, which is concerning me. Three hundred events failed. Why did it fail? Let's see. Something. Yeah, that doesn't look that doesn't look too happy. Let me think. Something might be wrong. Uh, right frame rate. Let's see. I don't think so because there's an AAF uh, session twenty three. I've done this before, so save. What is it? Start time. Start time is zero. All the usual things are not showing up as being problems. Save. Go away. You. Uh, save. Scan. You float over this, we should have a pop up, which is not showing at the moment. So that's something which needs to be fixed. Uh, let me see. Why is that not working? KGT one, one, Titan Sync, Titan Sync. There you go. I don't know what that happened, kind of gremlin there, but I just scanned, rescanned, and this is what you should normally see. Three events, okay, fine. Three events failed because there was no, probably there was no clip or they were like a slug. Who knows what they, what it was? Overflow, handle size, who knows? Uh, what is, what it does sometimes if you get clips that are just room tone, it doesn't know what to do with them. So what I do, so this has now gone through. You can check, you see that it's found these. So it's, so it's, it's, it's checked the sync of every clip against whatever audio you put in. And then what I do is I sort by sync offset. So you can look 
and you can say, okay, these, these, this is now a subframe sample offset. And you can say, okay, these clips had a huge offset. I can guarantee you they are just like either tiny clips or room tones. Made some calls. No, that has dialogue. There's a room tone. There's a room tone. My camera is picture. Okay, so maybe I have to do that. Some of them have dialogue, so we'll see what that, what that, what the issue is there. But you can just eliminate them. You can do tighten sync, clear sync offset if they look suspicious. And then we're seeing all of these offsets that are grouped in similar numbers. So that's telling us that there are these quarter frame offsets, which is all good. Quarter frame offsets, basically no offset. All these zeros and like this is samples. So two samples is like a you know a thousandth of a frame. Um, and these large numbers again, I would just ignore them. I don't think they're valid. Uh, Titan sync, clear sync offset. So now let's see, let's challenge this and let's clear the selection, assemble to PTX with nothing but the mixed tracks. Make them red, export, export PTX, synced. synced and let's see what that's given us let's see if see if uh, it's worked export ptx synced synced uh, and come to me pro tools so now as i say i haven't got the contrived example where i uh, create the the exact offsets but this assembly uh is now looking good you've got like a few samples there there's like three samples uh you have to for purposes of this video you have to trust me that these small offsets exist and uh as i say in a separate video i'll make a in-depth dive into titan sync because it's quite quite like a long process to show all the different bits but yeah the point is this is what happens when when, every, when all the dominoes are lined up uh, Vince, this is what happens is that you get a assembly, the red lined up to an AAF perfectly. Perfectly, I would say, you know, plus or minus maybe 50, 50 samples at worst, which is a hundredth of a frame. No one is bothered. Yep. So there's Titan Sync. So Titan Sync, assembly, speech alts, uh, timeline. God, wow. Timeline. Will this kill audio or audio, audio auto line post? Absolutely not. So let me just make it totally clear if anyone doesn't understand. Sorry to, to be uh, to, to be so blunt. This is nothing to do with auto align. Absolutely nothing. I know auto line has that static mode that will like offset the clip, but people aren't using that. People are using dynamic uh, auto aligning that um, actually, you know, wobbles the mic to be in phase with another mic. That is internal mic to mic sync not this is workflow sync this this hasn't been rendered there's no rendering here this just shifted it so this is like just shifting the bricks to put them down in the right place this is this should be considered a separate process this is putting putting the thing in the right place and then within that you have different mics that you then want to align you know this is this just this just aligned it based on the best channel as in probably the mix track so this just built it, this just rebuilt it correctly. It didn't say, okay, now we want the boom and the lav to be aligned. So. And, uh, and this is an issue because oftentimes the Avid cuts on a different frame edge than the field recorder mixer. It's, there, there's different, re everyone argues about which reason it is. It seems like there's not one consistent reason, but um, this is just for that. Yeah, it's definitely not auto aligned. And it doesn't, as Mark said, it, the really important thing, it makes no new files, which is awesome. Yeah, it's it's immediate. It, it there's no rendering. It's just, as I say, just putting the pieces in place. You can then do, if you want to just do a batch auto aligning, <laughs> people do. That's all up to you. But once you do that, you create media, you render, you can export, you can export rendered whatever you want. But Kr Kraken won't do that. It will Kraken will it will is uh, un doesn't touch. It never writes anything into any audio file. It never writes anything anywhere ever like it's it just it's just a pure it's a it's a pure workflow machine that just pr does things it just moves things around and places them it doesn't create new media i'm a complete purist in that regard and then you can dirty up your workflow however you want 
yourself once you've laid it up. Uh, okay, well, there's one huge thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, Marco, exactly. A huge the new thing, which we haven't even open yet. So it takes so much time to show these things is the timeline. So if anyone hasn't seen this, uh, let's do it. So the other button. I didn't talk about you can assemble video, we should do that timeline. So there's now a visual representation of the timeline. In this case, it is that EDL. They are kind of synced up. They are, you know, they're kind of two views on the same thing. That's our intention. So if I go to the thing here, this, their selections are in sync. They should be at least. Why is, I think I'm, am I sorting this in different order? There are so many different issues with what you're showing in what order. Uh, yeah, why does that keep jumping around? Something it's because it's syncing and it's getting confused. I don't want these on. There are so many things inside Kraken that try to jump for you and move to places to help you that when they don't do exactly as you expect, they feel like ah, it moves somewhere else. So that it's like a powerful tool. You can hurt yourself with a powerful tool. You've got to get, you've got to use it right. You've got to have your safety glasses on. Uh, so come on now. Now it should stay at the top. What is it doing? Is it jumping to the red one? There you go. So the red selection matches. And if we clear the selection, it clears there. I hope you can see that. And if I paint some things here, it's being painted on the, the timeline below it. So they sync up. Um, the red selection, the red event shows there. So now you've got a, we're kind of approaching towards a kind of like a Pro Toolsy thing. Obviously, there's not a waveform here. Like, don't ask because we're, obviously we're going to, we're planning for it in the future to put the waveform here. It's, it's an obvious idea that's in mind, but is a big complication. But you've now got a, a kind of a visual uh, previewer. Of, a, of, a, of an assembly and you can um, show so where Pro Tools has limited functionality we can show anything we want so we can we can show uh, the clip name here the audio file matched sample rate here so there's all 48 K's uh, I don't know what we want to do like the name and and most so that's you could, so if you're doing deep dive troubleshooting Thanks, Andrew, exactly. Avoiding processing and then until you decide to process. I will never commit you to processing. Um, uh, you can, if you're doing deep dive troubleshooting, you, you can put whatever text, but most importantly, you can color it however you want. This is what's most useful. So you can, let's say we want to color it by channel number. So now we've got like, it's just lit up, lit up with channel numbers. And I, I put, I'll put it in the number as well, just so we can see what we're doing. So there's your five channel files, or you want to do it by date. So there's essentially like your different shoot days divided up or scene color. There's a, there's, a, there's, there's your scenes in a certain color. Um, just, I don't know. It just feels lovely. Like it, it, you can do stuff without it. And you know, the assembly tools are mediated via the red list still for now, just, yeah. um, but you know, you just go to the red list and click. So we don't specifically have access to the assembly in the context menu on the right click, just to keep it a bit separated where, you know, you assemble from a from an individual EDL. And then here's where you sort of mess around with stuff. But you can I just I just think like, what can you show here? Originator, here's one originator. Now we've got the different recorders that were used on the shoot. Ah, I see. Different recorder was used there. Uh, originator. Uh, sound device of Scorpio and here's the mix six so just just a tool just a great power tool for for strange occasions when you need to d dig around and again uh, we, I'm sure between us all of us we can think of loads of ways that this display could be made more powerful to show loads of cool stuff uh, you can show multiple things at once so there's you can stack things up so there's a video and an audio EDL so the audio EDL is showing us unmatched because we are showing properties from the audio and it's not matched so it's not happy but if we showed uh, real, it suddenly is happy. So that video EDL is just showing the video reels. So that's like a video reel thing. I mean, a picture cut track. If I was to show clip name here, that's that's just a picture cut track just on the timeline. Um, so that's your common, you know, so colorful, like this just weird color thing. So we're comparing audio and video, video EDLs here. Uh, it syncs. Let's hope this works. It syncs. Do we have this? Is the playhead going to work, Julio? Let's see. Let's challenge it. R and T are plugged in. Uh, there's R and T, and there's the playhead. Now, don't get too excited. The playhead is not massively Pro Toolsy, 
but we're moving in that direction that the playhead actually works. Is it going to animate if I play though? What do you think, Julia? Julio. Julio is responsible for a, a huge amount of the timeline. He's done tons of work on it. That doesn't mean I'm blaming him. Um, At one point, you turned off the sync to DAW. I don't know if that. Yeah, that's... yeah, uh, maybe. No, that's on here. So playback. Oh, yeah. right. Again, these things are all like they're all just out of the lab and playing around. So uh, it's I'm, I'm I'm out of the actual edit for now. You see that? Do 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 do. So there's the playhead that will follow. Is it following? It's probably not, but that's fine. It will do. It will do one day. Hey, to turn on, uh, turn on follow. Follow door sync. sync. Thank Julio. Hey, there's Julio. Well done. There you go. It should, it should follow it. Should, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's all right. You know, it will do. We're close. Um, but you can see. The code is there already. Yeah, the function. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's a live and interactive process getting all this working. Uh, Hopefully you can see. So now it's stopped following. All this stuff is fresh as hell from the from the the lab just recently. We rushed it all out just in the week before the release, which was a week ago. So you know, it's to demonstrate the the power and then to develop uh, NTSC grid. The grid is independently NTSC controlled. So if you if you're syncing to an NTSC frame rate, you just have to adjust it like that. That might be made more slick in future, but that needs to be adjusted uh, between. You know, 23976 and 24 if you need to. Uh, and we are in TSC grid. So, yeah, timeline. Pff, what else does it do? I've got the EDL madness. Oh, of course, the cleaning. Okay. Cleaning demo. I'm going to stop Pro Tools. Massively, massive. The cleaning in Kraken 2 was, was apologetic. Now we drop on 40 EDLs. I, can't, I don't know whose EDLs, I remember whose EDLs were. 40 different, for some reason they have, they have a, a film divided into 40 EDLs. Let's just, doesn't really matter what the frame rate is. Let's just call it 23 just to not confuse it. So, and I add all of the EDLs to the timeline in one go. Boom! So there is no, there is no app that can do this for you in the world to do a, a, a mega overview of all the different. So this, this is where the colors come in. And you can change the colors. Obviously, this is so many now that it's a bit unmanageable. You can select them and press G to zoom in, or obviously R and T. And we're always working on new ways to zoom on the tracks. And obviously, we, we, I mean, we generally move towards Pro Tools style control, but not always just 100% following Pro Tools. Uh, and I don't know who Andy is. Andy could be suspicious. Um, but yeah, so there's uh, a massive EDL. And so now we want to merge it together. So I'm going to take the the uh, other ones out, unbubble them. Huge EDL there. I'm going to click. This is a new thing. Cleaning cleaning mode. Clean and merge. And as soon as I turn it on, it's going to start because it just it automatically animates. So I turn it on. It just starts doing it, and it does it now interactively, where it's just doing it live. You see so that, that kind of animated. So because it's so normally when you, if you clean a small thing, it's so quick you don't see it. But when it's huge like this, uh, depending on the power of the computer, so. You've got this control panel and, you, and you've got all these parameters for, for clearing duplicates. See, so when I change a parameter, it just redoes it. So it, it, we actually made it animate, basically just going through and just, and just sending stuff into a clean state. So that, 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 that black area is, the, we call it the preview area. You know, it's like a virtual output. These golden tracks are the cleaned tracks. So for now, it's just slamming all of that EDL into the tightest stack it can, which, you know, is not good in some contexts. Not, you know, ideally, you wouldn't clean up all this stuff. So what you can do is th this is quite a hefty way to demonstrate it because it's so complex, but you can um, get rid of stuff. We don't want these room tones. We don't want any of this stuff. Delete, remove selected, removed it. It's now recleaning. I'm doing it. It recleaned without those things, so it's better. And we will eventually get to here where you can delete the one on the preview, maybe. And so it's like an interactive cleaning where you can just pick out what you want to keep and what you don't, which I think is like powerful. And all these modes, hopefully people can see these removed tracks, ripple clips, allow overlaps. So you can you can allow tons of overlap to just now it's going to redraw again. It's now and it's now allowing it's now allowing things to squash together 
when they have uh, you know less than 14 frame overlap so if you if you don't care if you just want to ram stuff into like a suitcase squeezing the clothes into the suitcase it will uh it will ram them together to make a super cleaned assembly and so yeah there's there's many things to show here but essentially you can see if you have a simple edl it will just do a nice simple clean it will squash it all up we want to put them eventually into presets and different modes and i want to add this organizing mode which is not going to clean it flat it's actually going to separate things and say okay give me everything which has only has a fmk at the start or only give me room tones you know like just a, a complex analytical clean um we're moving towards that but that's a demonstration of mega power crazy edls but i might just get them out uh because it's too too much to deal with but yeah the cleaning mode that's the, that's the cleaning mode with a normal a normal uh, audio EDL. Obviously, this audio is already clean, but you can just change the parameters and it does it so fast. You see that? You see that's live redrawing. Hopefully, you can see that. Live live re, live remake. Um, remove large clips. Remove small clips. Okay, there aren't any in this one, but uh, it live live adjusts its settings, um, and you can. You can show. I need to. I need. To, what do I need here to demonstrate this? I need. I need. I need to bring in the video EDL as well because that's like a duplicate. So, if we say, exact, what's it? What's it doing? Remove exact duplicates. It's moving something. I'm just looking around random. Again, I didn't prep this. So removing exact duplicates. So it's animating live. It's it's removing that because it considers it a duplicate. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Again, I'm. You know, maybe I'll make an in-depth video with all the pre-prepared beautiful stuff. To show exactly, uh, <laughs> yeah, I know the uh, the animating the animated thing is a very funny crowd pleaser. <laughs> uh, hopefully, people watching this, professionals, can see the power. Even though I might not be showing everything, you know, in the most ideal way, I'm just showing you the powers that are there, and uh, how you use them is wide and varied. Um, Basic and advanced, yeah. I don't, know, I don't know what do we end up doing with that. I mean, I think I think we didn't even put the cleaning merge in basic mode. Uh, basic mode, the most important. Th the, there's no timeline in basic mode. There's no krakenizer, but we tried to put a lot of stuff. But the timeline is not there. Assemble to PTX is not there, and krakenizing the initial uh, transcription is not there. But we're always trying to put you know, whatever we can into basic mode. Um, yes. There's a whole point of this is to record it. So I'm, you know, we're going to record all this is going to go on YouTube as a full video. And if I can cut it up into clips, which is a daunting task, I will do. Um, but I have been a bit scattergun. So that might be a bit tricky. Maybe we can just do chapter markers for important moments. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, some timeline, assemble to PTX, uh, alt, let's look at the virtual overlay. We get into some of the funnier stuff. You know, if anyone has any specifics, they can shout out or uh, Samuel, you're struggling to get in the room. I'm letting you in. There's obviously light mode, which I think doesn't look as cool as dark mode. It looks a bit weird. So dark mode. Um, metadata panel. I like these things because I like, uh, is it invisible? So where, where is it? And not being invisible. I should have checked this because this panel, hmm. it's there. There it is. <laughs> okay, no transparent background for now. So, just like with with door sync, I'll go back to my. Oh, I'll, I'll use this. I can use this. I can use this. Oh, there you go. Crash. That was the metadata panel crashing. First crash. I think I did well to get that far with no crash. Uh, project. I don't think I did. I save one. No. So I'm just going to quickly get back the rushes. Show you how quick Kraken is now. It doesn't even matter if you crash, because you just get back. And there it is. There's all of your files back in with no scanning. And the uh, what do I need? I need I need a assembly. So I'll use a one mix. I'm just being very I'm sort of being a bit random here to hopefully show the powers that you know, I haven't prepped this to, to make it sure it works. I'm being very real with it. Scan, there's a mix. There's a there's a uh, track on the bottom. So there you go. So there's Kraken following that one channel, which is nice. And what was I going to do? Yeah, the, the overlay panel. Show metadata panel. Uh, so this is like a virtual sound report. So 
wherever you are, it also follows. And you can customize this. You can make presets out of it. And you can show anything you want. A bit like we had all the settings. You can show what I like is the uh, sound recorders notes. This this one doesn't have a lot of notes, but imagine you know we always say we don't we, you know we never look at the notes because it's not put in our face very easily. But now it is can be put in your face. Heavy traffic to the extent that it matters is is debatable because yeah we can hear the heavy traffic. We don't need to be told. Um, but at least now you could see some. There is a I recorded a wild track for this. Have a look here. So it's making a pipeline directly from the sound recordist to uh, the dialogue editor, which I love. I'm always thinking about our fellow. Uh, sound people on set who do everything to make our jobs easier that they can director was made aware of bag noise great um so that's useful and we are working on uh putting door tracks so let me show you let me show you a simulation of this uh well, you got it again i don't know maybe we should do transcription ah uh, ryan do you still have that up your transcription thing do you want to do it do you want to do you want to do you want to share and and if you know how to use this, otherwise I'll 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 tell you if you if it's something. Yeah, you, you might need to you might need to tell me, but I do yeah. have it up. And, let's and, do it. Uh, let's do it on your side because it's gonna be, because you've, you if you've still got what you had open. I do. Um, okay, let me share my screen. This will stop the other users. Yes, I do want to continue. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you, you should be able to just stop my share. Okay, you guys can see this screen. Uh, yep. Yeah. So. We want to we, we want to set that transcription track up as a sync track as a Kraken track. So, okay. so put, put the old, have you got your MIDI going? I hope this is a, this is not uh, this didn't open up a can of worms for you. Have you got um? If you save and scan, let me just Kraken. Um, okay, I need to set up my things. Let's see peripherals. Let's hope I didn't I didn't uh, throw you in the deep end. Yeah, no, no that's fine. That's, um, so just tell me what I'm missing. Yeah, yeah, MIDI in. Yeah, MTC button. Which needs to be yeah. Press OK. That's good. OK. Empty C button on the you know sixty percent of the way across top of the screen on your control um, panel next to your online button. Yeah. There we go. That's probably okay. enough. Now just just scrub around and see if Kraken's time code is responding. You okay, have to, yes, do, do the old split screen for us. Thanks. Yeah. All we need is sorry. No, no, that's no worries. We don't you know uh, just scrub. Just scrub across that transcription track in Pro Tools. Yeah, that'll do. Oh, yeah. So now do you can already see what's happening. Now do show show uh, metadata show metadata panel. It might appear invisible. <laughs> yeah. So right click. I mean, you can. The point is, you can have it invisible. You can have it overlaid. The reason for the invisible is to have it overlaid over a video to have a create a virtual okay. burn in. Um, which again, hopefully people can see. You can make a. You could make. Yeah, that's what we should do. I mean, you can imagine Ryan has a, has a video thing here. Imagine that his clip list is, is is a video, like on the right of the screen or whatever. Just some part of his screen is a video. You have to imagine that because I'm. I, we didn't yeah. prep that. Let's put it, let's put it down here because it's black yeah. down there anyway. Yeah. Imagine that's a video, which, which we can all do. Uh, now, if you scrub, uh, oh yeah, so you need to right click on the on the metadata panel to add a new to a new channel. And make it bigger, make the panel bigger because you don't want to, don't add a channel to in, into you can resize the whole panel. Bottom right, little bottom right um hooky thing. Yeah. And now right click yeah. somewhere in the space. Yeah. And do door, door tracks. Transcription. Oh, is it already there? Yeah, I just switched it. I just switched it. Sorry. You know, I think I screwed it up now. Put it back. Yes, yeah, so I can see that. So now I want to get rid of these and just have the transcription, right? Well, sure, but you, you can just move it. If you can find it, uh, where's the transcription track? Just, just, <laughs> I don't just, know why it just it just made my track disappear. Okay, double click on it. Double double click on it on on tap GT and move it. You can now move it. So all this is editable. Um, so this is like a full layout you can do. Uh, it's you know it's uh, it, it needs some nice upgrades to be to be super slick, but you can make a, 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 any layout you want and you can save it. So. No, oh, that's not the track. Sorry, that's sorry. That's the channel. Sorry, there you go. That one. Here you go. So this is now live ADR, I suppose. And, and what we want to do is we want to have all of the. We want to be able to assign all, a multi-track where all of your ADR EDQ tracks are all merged into one, which gives you like a confidence check on ADR. So all of your spotting channels, if you when you're looking through something and you're saying, "Are we have have I spotted this to, for ADR?" Because it sounds dodgy. Rather than having to go to that track and look on that character, it will just come up on the screen. And you'll see out. Oh, now it looks like it's out of sync. How do I fix that? Uh, well, 
I mean, we just threw this in, so there could be all sorts of time code <laughs> and positional matters, sure. which I'm not going to, let's not dwell on it. Again, I just want to show okay. you. Um, and, yeah. and, and, and th I mean, that export transcription, again, a lot of stuff is very recent, so there may be little things that aren't quite lined up properly. They'll all be easily addressable once we just sort of knuckle down. But I sure. want to show people the point that you can customize this. You, you can change the color of that overlay. You can make it, you know, background, different background colors. You can change the size of the text. So that's a fully customizable overlay that can show ADR tracks, to-do tracks. I've done it with to-do tracks. If you make a track called to-do and you put notes, if you're going into a spotting session, and, you, and so you have that note appear on the screen. So just so you don't accidentally forget, oh yeah, don't forget to recut the show or whatever, put a note that says right. recut the show, and it will just, it will just um, flash up on the screen. So it's just like a, like a note being shown in, in, uh, in your face. Which, again, I think this is one of, the, one of these side things in Kraken people don't even know is there. Which is like so useful right. if, you, if you use it right. Um, so yeah, I, I thought it would, uh, maybe the transcription is not perfectly aligned for some reason to do with the frame rate or something, but it, we will we will make it work and we, it will just reflect those channels. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm happy that that's good enough to show what, what I intend. Um, okay, let's go back to back to me for a for a very quick. Am I still sharing? No share. Uh, I'm going to keep this maximum two hours, 20 minutes more max, just to show people this co controllable stuff, add audio file metadata, uh, I don't know, whatever. Track summary, that's quite a good one. So when you're wondering, if you're wondering, it's just really, did this really not have a, a second boom or something? You can just see the summary of the track. It, that, that data is just replicated from the blue panel. Uh, change label title to tracks just to show everyone all the things you can do uh, change the color to yellow background whatever garish thing we want and now that panel which can be transparent easily some strange overlay if you want it uh, is now following the channels in the current clip as a, a confident, again, I don't know, you know, whatever you want, really. Again, it's just the toolkit. What, and you can save that. Save as new presets, stupid. So now you can go to load preset demo, which is in, which is there, that invisible one. Load preset, stupid. Yes! <laughs> it worked. So that's amazing. So, yeah. It's just another thing. Again, maybe more than half of users don't even know that's there. Um, getting so we're getting. I think I've showed big stuff. There's more stuff. In the manual, the Andrew manual, the the manual. This video, I hoped to be a kind of manual, <laughs> some kind, which that might not prove to be the case. Quick help. We went really crazy on quick help, um, making it show stuff for everything and how to use everything. Look, every single box, every single box, every single column, every single thing. If I go to, um, what, are, what have I got here? Just an example, track filter, current audio file track name. You see, we, which I tried to put every single button, everything which we could hook onto, I tried to make it uh, work. I'll show you uh, EDL again, start TC, EDL 23, import, Go to the red panel, match it. You see, there's an import, match, assemble to PTX, done. Your assembly can be done in 30 seconds if your material is good. I'm sure I'll make, I'll, I will make a video of like an assembly in 20 seconds one day. Like it'll be, I could put it on TikTok. Um, so yeah, EDL panel, I've got this thorough one paragraph. But if I open up assemble to PTX, uh, you see assembler, every single button, a little explanation, every single thing that we could. Um, so this, so that, that hopefully this would explain lots of stuff, lots of things people always need to ask, uh, will now just be invert search. So you can invert the search makes this to be a not search does not include. Um, so yeah, that's the most important thing is that quick help. Uh, and then this video, and of course I will write the manual one day, but that is just, uh, any other questions? Can I watch the recording? Yes. 
Did I miss any questions? No. Um, red panel, blue panel, purple panel, timeline. Anyone can th think of anything that I'm missing out? Um, um, one thing, Mark, that's pretty awesome that has saved us recently is that you can, you know, we've been talking about dragging the EDLs into the edit timeline, but you can actually just take a PTX file do it. and drag do it. it and add and like make, you know, say you get a really crappy turnover or really bad EDLs, you can actually make an assembly from the AAF really easily by taking the um, AAF Pro Tools file and sticking it in there and matching it that way. That's been saving our butts on a lot of shows and it's sometimes gets better matches than the EDLs as well. Yeah, I'll show a tangential thing to that. I said I, I don't want to mess with my own personal projects, but I will just chuck in a PTX from my current project. PTX, straight into Kraken, boom. Timeline of that PTX, boom, there. So this is a PTX viewer now. Now that's not, obviously that doesn't match because I haven't brought in the media, but there's a, a PTX previewer. Look at my, is that my editing? No, that is just XA1. That looks like a raw assembly. Yeah, good. Anyway, you wouldn't see my fades even if it was, but there's a PTX viewer. Uh, so which is more useful than that is the demo thing. Uh, one of the PTXs we made, the Ryan one, Ryan PTX timeline. Uh, there's a PTX as an EDL. So there's 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 your import PTXs to assemble. If that if you had an AAF, that would be an AAF converted into Kraken so that you could assemble it. I'm going to match it. Uh, so, so there you go. So there's there's a matched imported PTX, which now means we can use this as a PTX browser. Let me, let me again. I, oh no, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong one. No, I'm not. Yes, I am. I, I got. I got. I had my. I had my own EDL. Uh, so. PTX essentially a PTX loader. So this is what I've been saying to people. If you want, if you wanted to grab something from for, from a from a recap, and you just you know that it's here, and you just you visually just find it, click on it, find the clip. You still haven't told me. Find it and then just spot it into your new session. So you don't have to uh, go into the old session if you've got some huge session that takes a few minutes. Um, and uh, you can do it and because of MXF support. It's really handy with the AFs that we get out that are MXF. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, I, with MXF, I'm always worried to promise anything because it depends. We need to be able to get the correct data from it. I, a hundred percent. I've had some, I've had some success both with um, Titan syncing and with just building assemblies from an MXF now. So yes, it's been pretty definitely with Titan sync. That's the main thing I did was was for you again, Ryan. Was uh do it directly from MXF, uh, so I can read the data in the MXF, but we can't get. You know, we can't get MXF inside Kraken as media, for example. I like, can't have an MXF player here. Like, I tried. Totally. It's, it's a deep, it's a deep rabbit hole. Um, um, like there are many rabbit holes, but yeah, PTX viewer. So, so there's a PTX. I've opened the PTX. I just imagine, like now we clean the PTX. I don't know what we're doing here, but like let's just clean it. So there's like a there's like an un unfield recorderer that's unfield recorded those things. It wasn't field recorder, obviously. It was it was a Kraken PTX, but that's been unexpanded. And so now you've got a new thing that you, you could spot. It's just like, um, you know, then the packs tip groups. Uh, well, I think so. Uh, let's answer Daniel's question. Ryan PTX. Uh, well, let's just do AAF session so we can show you Ryan's AAF thing as time runs out. Uh, why did they add this thing on the bottom? It's so annoying. Um, clip groups, let's just, uh, I don't even know the answer. To do. To do track. Hello. Edit stuff. Yay. Yeah, yeah. Save. So there's AF session. So this is like a different path into Kraken from the old scanning. This is like a, a different path of just pulling in the whole thing. So you can bring in a few different ones if you want. And I tried to get, um, I tried to look at PTSs and PT5. In theory, we can get really old stuff. So what I wanted, I wanted the people at Skywalker to be able to get to their archive stuff and just look at uh, PTXs. 
PDFs, really old Pro Tools sessions without having to actually open them and wait 20 minutes for it to try to find plugins that don't even exist anymore. Uh, that's a discussion I had a while ago that I thought would be cool. So there's the AAF session. You see the auto cleaner is still on because I've got the clean window open. So there's a cleaned AAF session. Crazy. I'll just close that because we don't want to clean at the moment. Uh, what am I doing here? I, am, I assume I'm just going to match stuff. So I just did a match. I just pressed uh, Command M to match. We could almost have matching happen automatically now. Just It just assumes to match everything that brings in. Um, so there's our session viewer again. Uh, what am I doing, though? I am... What was I... What were we talking about? The AAF? What was, what was I actually saying? Copy and paste. What was I saying? What were we doing? Daniel, clip groups. To do clip okay clip how about hang on oh hang on hang on hang on hang on clip name okay clip name. okay so no it won't have matched any audio so for now for now i've just got a, clearly i've just got a placeholder that says clip but i can definitely make that happen where clip groups will come in uh so yeah we're close you see it had the clips but i just didn't, i didn't i'm not looking for the name properly so but you're putting it you're putting it down in the color coding one too, right? Like if you put it in the uh in there. Oh, ah, there. Oh, so, oh sorry, yes, you're right. Um clearly after after nine to five ADR and two hours of talking, I am Yes, I was wrong, it works. <laughs> I just sorry. validated my entire existence on this. Yes, gym. I knew Thank I knew you. this is why Brian's here, absolutely. Um yes, yeah, sorry. I, I, I should have thought that I would have got it right already. Why did I doubt, doubt myself? So there's clip groups coming in. I mean, what do you want to do with it, Daniel? Though obviously, obviously, it's funny. It's very, very nice. Maybe, maybe now that this clip group is here, we can have some other interesting functionality going on where, it, where when you sync to door and you scrub around, it, when it goes over that clip group, it it makes Kraken turn purple or something. Yeah, sure. You know, any any weird weird functionality is possible now. There, there are so. This is what Kraken is about. There are so many pipelines and tools. It is, as I've called it, a toolkit a superpower toolkit of just many, many, many different functionalities that we've tried to pipe together in a way which can lead me as we come to the end. And obviously I hope we answered any questions. Um, uh, can lead me to some other thoughts. People will see this, this weird little light here. We have, um, we're always trying to address the problem of keyboard shortcuts and where are you clicking, making this power tool? Where are you, where are you clicking? What are you interacting with? So we have the idea now of focus, which is, in some ways asking for some trouble but when you click on this r and t now does here click here r and t does this so you'll see there's a slight discoloration a change in coloration you can't really notice it clearly this light in the in the corner is the main one when you click on things up and down in the red panel changes when it's focused now we click here it changes this up and down click here it changes this so we're now trying to make trying to make it fully interactive based on context which is so tricky. I hope people can realize how tricky it is because again, like I said before, there's so many iterations of how you use it. We've already been pointed out to an issue by Jorge um, that uh, you now can't press up and down when you're clicking on the waveform, which we absolutely have to fix. We think that by default, when you're looking around the waveform, up and down should move the blue list up and down rather than having to click on it. Now it does. That's a very fair point, which, which breaks our system of assumed focus by clicking. And also, so we now have this focus. You can see slightly goes darker and lighter, and that light lights up. But also, the beginning of, of something else for power usage is these inputs. Hopefully, these are explanatory. I don't know whether they have a pop-up. Uh, they probably don't. Yeah, they don't. Um, but they, these are the, the, the pipings of all of the reactions inside Kraken. This is like a revealing of the engine. So currently, click on the blue thing, and the green panel reacts. If you turn off blue here, though, this is like the input to this panel. Turn off blue, it no longer moves. But if for some reason you don't want it reacting. So everything goes through this. Now, this no one knows about this. It's the first time I've mentioned it. Um, the purple panel changes the green panel. If for some reason you don't want that, you turn off purple there. And I think, yep, it's not going to react. Now, the blue panel, is the blue panel, the blue panel still is. I just happen to be looking at transcriptions from one file. Blue panel still changing. Um, so you can turn off the inputs, it's basically like a, the old reason patching, you can patch in different things. So that's, I don't know that that's people should play with that too much. But it, that will lead towards kind of customized power usage of Kraken, if people are able to sort of make this into like a mega 
mega interactive tool um, looking uh, you know, clips that we didn't match why they didn't match uh, I'd love this too okay two people said they love it if it's in my range of crack and reels uh, uh, do you think we can, if we could save it we could import part of a PTX of course I can do any we can do anything with a PTX if I mean currently the PTX uh, import uh, just imports it. I don't have a window. But we could have a window that could just say, "Oh, just import the first ten minutes." Of course, we can do anything. You know, anything like that is obviously we can do. It's just it goes without saying. It's just an easy manipulation of the data to just take off ten minutes of it. Uh, that's quite an interesting thought. There are so many possibilities now with the different bits being linked together. But um, why EDL clips didn't match? Okay, there's just some sort of miscellaneous. So this EDL is pretty good. I don't know what this was now. It's from the PTX match. It matched real to real, so that tells you that it matched real, the real in the in there to the real. We have we have advanced matching modes now. If you get into matching trouble, you can say, "Oh no, uh, I, I don't know. I'll clear the matches. Clear matches." Ed U. I don't know who Ed U is. I'm not going to accept that for the moment. Um, uh, clear selection. Clear matches. I don't know these things. Match by clip name only. No match. Can't do it. No clip name. Matches. Scene take. Scene, scene slate take. It shows you the method of the matching, and you can always force things. You can do the old forcing. Other There's things I'm not showing here. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stick with two hours. I mean, I mean, I'll stay on this Zoom if there are people here who want to do specific stuff. I mean, keep the recording going. But I was going to say to everybody, obviously, people can just, I'm sure they have, disappear if they need to. Although there's still 50 people here, so that's great. But, you know, if someone has a specific burning question, this is a good chance to answer it. Find matches with the other EDL. You can, let's imagine that you're, what have we got here? Uh, we've sort of the audio EDL. So the let's do some imagination and say that the video EDL, which is 23, which is there, is uh, I'll try and match it. I'll try and match the video EDL. Okay, it does match. Okay, but let's pretend it didn't match. Let's pretend it didn't match because Kraken couldn't handle it. Um, you can say, okay, Kraken, please use the audio EDL as a reference. So it takes it takes every clip from the video EDL and it says use the audio EDL to figure out. You know what's going on which makes sense because the audio edl will tend to be from the right place so use the audio edl to cross-reference this assembly okay uh, did it do it okay it did it oh that's interesting it did it the source column filled up but i don't have the match method properly implemented that's interesting because there was probably an unusual match method so but i don't know if you saw that but i'll do it again so you didn't see it clear matches um find matches using other edl now, obviously, you're just assuming that you're trusting this, but it did do it. Now, it might as well have been doing the real matches. Just, that, the, the intention is, is that you use one EDL to assemble another. Uh, thanks, Andrew. Nice one. Uh, uh, Darren, Sonny, Walkington, I don't know. Um, so, yeah, looking up EDL. I'll, I'll look through the menu quickly in two minutes until any other questions come in. Um, different matching modes, all sorts. Titan Sync we talked about. Selection we talked about. Cleaning, quick clean is something we'll have in basic, just does a basic clean. Crazy stuff, crazy stuff. Export EDL if you need to. We didn't talk about picture cut track. People know that from Kraken 2. Uh, scene cut track, report track, exports a clip track of, of the state of the matching and of the uh, fixed syncing. Um, there is a massive new thing, Slate Format Editor, which is in beta. This is a huge power. This is what these columns were, which were one of the first things we looked at. It will basically, this is a bit like the scene uh, change editor, it's, it takes all the different formats are in use and it allows you to allocate very precisely what it all means. Um, so this, uh, this, this could allow you to decipher some crazy EDL where you have no other choice. And I've got this built in. I, I, I've basically done a slight hard coding where this EDL just happens to be well patched in. So it, it just, we will improve this as time goes by, but it automatically based on, it tries to figure out that this is seen, slate, take, but you can reallocate, you can repatch here. You can repatch what each of these symbols means in each of these formats. And so that needs a whole video by itself. But, and there's, there's a lot of complication that goes into that. And we need to try to make it just sort of magic, happen by magic. That's the aim. But what that does is uh, impart, impart, impart the EDL with scene slate and take data, which then could provide you with a matching method of scene and take, which may not have been possible if, if you had no real and no, if you had no real name and no clip name, you just had the editor's label you know x8 e slash 1 c we can assemble from that um 
we didn't look at layouts you can save the layouts of the app uh we looked at detaching but um yeah i feel i've, I've always said to go through everything in kraken I, I reckon three hours so two hours is most people's attention span and probably my talking span although i could keep going um pc version is an absolute pain we're trying we've got it working there are some issues on pc that are just so unpleasant to fix uh that it's going to be a, a beta project for a long time the pc one um like getting krakenizer to work on pc is just w way slower than Kraken krakenizer the transcriber is heavily optimized for silicon you should get an m1 or borrow an m1 to to, to do transcription um okay anybody ryan brian anybody else otherwise i can you know uh scene cut track just looking yeah that that was the one thing that I've, I've always wanted to kind of dive deeper into is the scene cut track because i know there was kind of a beta version and then yeah i know i know i know that we talked about it over the months and years and, and i've been elusive um the video edl what i want is for the timeline to basically show you the scenes and then just press a button and it makes them um we have the old thing with this is like the baby version of that this is the original one which just just very quickly uh again this shows you this tells you that it looked through the clip names and it found that 834 things that are formatted number dash two letter star and so you then say okay i want to treat the first part of that or the second part of it or the third part as the scene so now I'm taking the second part of it as the scene. I think it's the second part. Is that right? Or, no, no, that doesn't look right. I guess it's the first part. Yeah. Okay. So I've just told it that the first that the first part should be used the one, and this and it's given me this prediction, and that looks a bit like a scene cut track. So let's just export all these things are not really implemented. Use American slating. That's all just indicators of. See, did it crash? Did it? Did it survive? Maybe it did. Uh, I don't know that that worked. There could be issues. I've not played with that for a while. That might just have. Uh, Almost seems been... like that that EDL panel that you were just showing would be very helpful, you know, to like Which panel? the the complicated the... one. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, that 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 is like like V two of this, gotcha. like taking this to its furthest extreme. Right. Um, right. Uh, Yeah, I don't know where that's going. It should have exported there. So okay, there might be a, there might be a bug there. We'll 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 look at that desktop. Daniel reckons desktop. I was going to agree. I was scared to go to the desktop in case I've got loads of rubbish on there, but uh, I'll go there because I think I tidied it up. Desktop, not expect to desktop. Yeah, thank you. Well, Daniel, Daniel was braver than me. That just appeared. Okay, so Pro Tools is still open. I didn't realize you could drag CGRP files into the, the into here. That's good to know. I just saw Ryan doing that. Um, uh, you need to spot this. This just appeared. Spot it to its original timestamp. Boom. Ungroup. Boom. Scene cut track. There. There's your scenes. According to that metadata. This is tried and trusted things from Kraken 2. Uh, picture cut track. It's a video EDL. Picture cut track. Same deal. We'll use the uh, clip name as the contents. Choose folder. No, let's just export it. Where did it go? Yeah, it went to the desktop. Fine. We can probably improve that, make that slicker. Um, but I will just go from the desktop picture cut track. Again, do that nice. Well, really the best way is to go spot mode. Let's see if we're in spot mode, it makes a new track. Pick cuts, but it doesn't give you the spot dialogue straight away, which is what I wanted. So be it. Spot to its location. Ungroup it. Don't know why it's got any part of the clips. That looks faulty. That's faulty. Did I have a yeah? I had a selection. I had one selected. That's why that went wrong. Zero selected. So it will it will export just part of part of your stuff if you want. Export scene cut track clip name. Export overwrite. Thank you. Don't crash. Yeah. And picture cut track made it to ten oh four. Bring it in. Spot it to its timeline. Ungroup it. There you go. That was a demonstration of the selection. There's a picture cut track with a with all the new Pro Tools graphical glitches if they're coming on the Zoom um picture cut track scene cut track all sorts of crazy stuff um yeah 
yeah still got 49 people here thanks for staying as i say uh we can make an official end uh if we want uh if ryan or brian want to say any nice final things to make me feel happy they're welcome to um uh, no, I guess it's, <laughs> it, it's been a great demo and, uh, even, you know, I learned, I learned lots, uh, yeah. it's definitely, um, the go-to tool for, for everyone around here as Vince will account. Hey Vince. Hey man. <laughs> Vince is Vince. Vince is the greatest Kraken friend that, that exists. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, alongside Ryan, Vince and Ryan are my two best Kraken, Kraken heads, crackheads. Um, uh what was i thinking i was just thinking yeah yeah warner brothers they're they're at warner brothers now the uh you know where they make dozens hundreds of shows you know a, a year and uh you know want want kraken to be the in-house tool and uh you know to some they're, degree they is, definitely but... uh yeah for sure it's it's taking a little bit of time but there's a lot of other forces at work that, yeah yeah it's been, it's been yeah. years of discussion but you know they they have uh, they have people who spend their whole time assembling it's amazing to see. I had the pleasure of seeing it a year ago when I saw Vince and Brian in person. And uh, yeah, you know, there are a lot of, lot of Kraken fans at Warner Brothers and at Skywalker and at various places. And it's, you know, used on some of the biggest stuff in the world. So uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's pretty indispensable for us too. Polly can't live without the transcription feature. Like yeah. it's, it's every month, I think I was bugging you asking for a beta again. Yeah, the transcription was running on this kind of beta testing thing for a year amongst some people and it just it rolled over every month and people were using it people used it on documentaries where they were searching in amongst five hour interviews for things that they would never have found before and so now they were I had some someone who was in tears of joy that they could find some little patch straight away now um and yeah you know, it's constantly evolving. Everyone can always, the, the languages of the transcription and the ideas and the PTX, everything is just open to the community to make cool new stuff. And, uh, you know, the next horizon, I suppose the next horizon is AI and whether, whether that will be a tool for us or whether it will take us over. That's yet to be seen. But I'm uh, hoping that Kraken will just evolve as a tool for us, not not instead of us, you know, I will, I, will, I will try to make it assemble automatically and pick the channels and do all sorts of cool stuff. But that will always be for the dialogue editor to then use. That's my plan. Uh, we definitely appreciate that part of it. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, you know, I suppose this doesn't really end until we just press end the meeting. So <laughs> I just feel like I can just sit here and see if anyone has any more questions. So let's I'm going to leave the recording on because anyone who wants to sit through the two hour recording, you know, they're welcome to watch this, the rest of this, but let's say we're, we're finished officially. Um, so if everyone disappears, they can disappear, but, but, you know, I'm just going to be here on the zoom. If anyone has any, if anyone wants to ask a question, I, I think you should make it another just two hours of awkward sitting in silence. <laughs> yeah. See <how> YouTubers <laughs> get to the Hard, hold for room tone. Hold for room tone. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Room tone. Good. That's enough. And, uh, we are, I, I could, I could sit here awkwardly for hours. I'm, I'm, I'm built that way, but uh, other people aren't. So yeah, please, people should just, can just uh, disappear or stay. And uh, thanks Thank very you, much. Mark. I'm going to be one of those disappearing people right now. Uh, thanks. Man. It. Thanks a lot for coming. Absolutely. Look forward to the uh, edited video. Yeah. Maybe, Hey, maybe I'll, maybe I can come to LA. I don't know, February, March.